Hi. So I recently found out about a, uh, a very interesting music CD from 1992 by uh, the Information Society Group. The CD's name is Peace and Love Inc. And what makes this, uh, this particular uh, CD super interesting is that it has a uh, very mysterious uh, track which is labeled 300 BPS N, 8, 1. And that is basically uh, the settings for a 300 baud per second terminal with no parity, 8 data bits, and 1 stop bit. A, a very common, um, uh, albeit uh, low spec, uh, terminal setting. So, um, my understanding is that this particular CD has a data track, which is track number 12. Um, and apparently, if you connect it to a terminal with the appropriate terminal settings, you should be able to find out what's in that track. All right, so let's see what we can do with this. So first problem is how do we go from the CD to an audio format uh, that can be input into the uh, modem. Um, and uh, I haven't had a portable CD player uh, for a number of years now. So the next best option for me was to transfer um, the data track from the CD to a brand new cassette. Unfortunately, I don't have a data cassette, which are usually 5 to 10 minutes in length. This one is a 60 minute uh, regular audio cassette, but it should work fine. I don't expect any issues with that. So why don't we get right to it? All right, so I've got my hi-fi system ready. Why don't we go ahead and put the CD in. sure we pick up let's see here well, I guess it was already on 12 there we are so we're on track 12 next we're gonna go ahead and stick the, the tape into the tape deck And I've got the Dolby off and maximum recording level in order to maximize the signal level for the data. And uh, we'll go ahead and record a blank uh, few second lead here. This is to account for the blank lead tape. Um, and then we're ready. So I'll go ahead and start uh, recording here. And let's start the play. And you can hear it probably in the background as well. Now this is recording internally from directly from the CD to the tape deck so outside noise is, uh, does not record onto the cassette deck itself I'm not sure how long that track is unfortunately it doesn't say in the documentation here Okay, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and stop. And it took a little, almost three minutes here. So let's rewind and see if we got anything. Let me switch to the tape. Alright, let's see what we've got.
yeah sounds good all right so this is the first part on to the next challenge so now I've got the cassette uh, with the data on it next step is to figure out how to get that data into the TI um, and um, find out what's what it contains the first step is uh, the venerable TI Texas Instruments program recorder um, I've got this uh, maybe a few decades ago and it still works fine um, so that will take care of playback of the data track next is the modem um, I do have a 1200 baud, actually a 2400 baud modem connected to my TI right there, but um, I wanted to use something uh, that was donated to me um, by Lee on Atari Age, and that's a uh, vintage 300 baud uh, modem, um, specifically made for the TI 994A computer. Um, doesn't get much more vintage than that um, but the problem of course is it does not have any input jacks anywhere um, except for the power supply and um, whether it's in originate or answer mode I think I better meet it up so the right side up and it's got a uh, Honestly, I don't know what that TST means. We'll find out soon enough. When, uh... Anyway, so in order to get anything into that, um, we have to use a, an old-fashioned handset. Well, I don't have one, unfortunately. Um, but I do have the next best thing, which is a gimmick I got a few years ago, and that's this thing. And that is a handset uh, designed uh, basically to connect to your... Uh, cell phone and <laughs> basically it just connects with a standard uh, oops, sorry standard audio plug here and um, you know I've tested it and it works you can actually listen and talk um, using this handset um, it's meant as a gag uh, really um, and um, you know it'll be fun on the subway or on the bus <laughs> to be talking on your phone using this thing. You get quite the interesting looks for sure. In any case, so um, what I can do is plug this um, via the audio plug. I do have to use a uh, an adapter which is a stereo to mono adapter um, in order to be able to connect it to the tape recorder. But yeah, this will plug into the uh, ear uh, output of the data recorder and I should be able to get the uh, the sound of the tape through the speaker here and all I have to do at that point is basically just start the communication put the receiver on the modem and theoretically off we go let's find out if this actually works alright so I've got the tape in the tape recorder I've got the handset connected to the ear output of the tape recorder and I've got the modem powered up see the light here um, one thing I ran into a problem is that the handset is a little bit too big for the cups so it wouldn't fit snugly so what I did is I loosened up the cup this cup here so that it would slide backwards a little bit and now the handset fits quite nicely the settings on this are on originate and full duplex it's uh, a standard 300 baud modem and um, it's connected to the RS-232 directly in the back all right and I've got uh, here good old telco uh, one of the best terminal emulators back in the day it's really full featured um, uh, the only uh, issue, it's not an issue, it was really not an issue at the time, is that it's 40 columns only. Um, it does not have 80 columns, but then back in the day, 80 columns were quite rare anyway. So, let's give it a shot. Alright, everything is set up. We're at uh, 300 baud. 
8 data bits, no parity, one stop bit, full duplex. And let's make sure everything is good. Again, the modem is on Originate, at, uh, and it's a 300 baud modem with full duplex. Okay, here we go. Play it. Tape is on, modem is responding. We've got some response for sure with this. Huh, okay. So we're getting some gibberish here. Usually that means that either the data on the cassette is bad or possibly um, the playback is not accurate enough for the uh, terminal to pick it up properly. So we're getting garbage. Let me see if we can play with the volume a little bit here. Yeah, it's not making any difference whatsoever. Okay, well let me let me think about that for a second here. All right, so I think I figured out uh, what the issue was. Uh, the main problem was that I recorded the tape uh, on a hi-fi system. Um, and that system, particularly the tape deck, was recently serviced with all the belts replaced, everything lubricated, and it's in, in tip-top shape. Plus, it's a quality tape deck from the 90s and not uh, the cheap stuff that we have today. So, um, unfortunately, um, it's quite a mismatch with the humble uh, TI uh, data recorder that I have. Uh, which is several decades old, never been serviced, and probably quite uh, 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 inconsistent in playback. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a significant amount of uh, uh, wow and flutter uh, in there. So um, when it played the cassette tape, it just did not play it properly, and I think the terminal was just not recognizing the characters, and we, we were getting garbage. So the solution was to actually record the CD data track directly to the uh, TI data recorder, um, which is what I did uh, offline. I connected the uh, speaker output um, directly to the microphone input of the data recorder and re-recorded the three-minute uh, data track. Um, and I think that uh, should solve the problem. So why don't we go ahead and... Uh, get that uh, new playback on the way. Here we go. Tape is on. We've got tone on the modem. And yes, here we are. Ha! <laughs> this is this is great. Ah, wow, this is going way too fast for for me to read uh, consistently. I do see there are no dropped characters, pretty much everything looks good. I do see like the occasional lowercase here. Um, shoot, I should have spooled this to the printer for to keep a record of it. I'll do that offline again. Um, I'm not going to really read it out loud. You can go ahead and pause the video as it, uh, as it scrolls by uh, to read the whole thing. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is really working uh, much better than I expected, to be honest with you. So we've got a, a uh, TI, genuine TI data recorder uh, connected to a genuine TI uh, 300 baud acoustic modem, uh, which is connected to a genuine TI RS-232 inside the genuine TI peripheral expansion box. And... Uh, the software is the Telco terminal from the uh, uh, 80s, um, and uh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> I'm honestly really tickled pink that uh, I finally got uh, the uh, handset uh, to good use. I, you know, at once the novelty had worn off uh, after the first days was sitting on a shelf uh, with really no functionality for it, and now I, uh, I found a good use for it. So this is this is really awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the whole uh, process here. Um, not sure. This is a three-minute uh, data track, so we should 
be getting pretty close here to the end. Yeah, I'll try to also print it, spool it to the TP printer, uh, which is basically saves the text uh, on the TP, and it'll be can be converted to PDF and printed on a conventional printer eventually. Yeah, interesting story. I'm catching bits and pieces of it here. Kind of weird that they decided to put this on the CD. I'm not sure what the impetus was for to do this. Um, yeah, it's uh, huh. every word of the story is true. Kurt Harlan. Yeah, that's it. Okay, tape is off. Well, fascinating. I'll have to read this at leisure. Uh, sounds like an interesting story for sure. In any case, um, <laughs> this was uh, uh, an interesting side project. Um, and uh, I really had a lot of fun uh, doing this. Uh, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it along the way. Thank you for watching.